you ever get the feeling that numbers have like a secret life, you know, with all these hidden rules and weird games they seem to play? Well, today we're going to crack that code. We're going to dive into some of the most surprising patterns out there and show you the awesome logic hiding right under our noses. So do numbers actually play games? I mean, it really seems like it sometimes. Let me show you exactly what I mean. I've got a couple of tricks for you that honestly feel way more like math than they do math. Okay, first up, I want you to picture any four numbers in a row. Let's just say uh, three, four, five, and six. Now imagine you can stick plus or minus signs between them any way you want. You could do three, plus four, minus five, plus six, or maybe three, minus four, minus five, minus six. Doesn't matter. Here's the crazy part. No matter how you mix and match those signs, your answer is always gonna be an even number. Every single time. How weird is that? All right, you ready for trick number two? Check out this beast of a number, 489,710. Now, if I told you to find the remainder when you divide that by nine, you'd probably grab your phone, right? But what if I told you there's a secret shortcut? All you have to do is add up the digits. So four plus eight is 12, plus nine is 21, plus seven is 28, plus one is 29. Okay, so what's the remainder of 29 divided by nine? Well, it's two. And get this, that is the exact same remainder you get from that original massive number. Insane. Okay, this is starting to feel a little bit like sorcery, right? But here's the thing about math. There's no actual magic. It's just logic that we haven't figured out yet. So the big question is, how on earth does this stuff work? And maybe more importantly, why? Well, that's exactly what we're about to dig into. All right, let's start with that first puzzle, the one with the four numbers in a row. The solution really just boils down to one simple but really powerful idea. And that idea is called parity. Now, it sounds fancy, but it's just a word for whether a number is even or odd. That's it. So what our little puzzle is telling us is that no matter what we do with the pluses and minuses, the answer always has an even parity. So let's figure out why. Okay, so instead of getting stuck on three, four, five, and six, let's bring in a little algebra. Don't worry, it's simple. We'll just call our four numbers A, B, C, and D. This way our proof works for any four consecutive numbers. So one random combination could look like this, A plus B minus C minus D. All right, now here's where things get really cool. What happens if we change just one of those signs? Let's say we flip the plus B to a minus B. We'll leave everything else exactly the same. How does that tiny change ripple through and affect the final answer? Well, to figure that out, all we have to do is subtract our new expression from the original one. Yeah, I know, it looks a little messy with all the parentheses, but just watch what happens when we clean it up. Boom, the difference is exactly 2B every single time. And what do we know for sure about any number multiplied by 2? It's always even. This is the key. It means every time you flip a sign, you're just adding or subtracting an even number from the total. And if you take a number and change it by an even amount, you can't change its parity. If it was even, it stays even. If it was odd, it stays odd. So that means all the possible answers have to have the same parity. It's like a domino effect. So, you see? This whole method of using a little bit of simple algebra, it's like a master key. It doesn't just work for this one puzzle. We can actually use the exact same kind of thinking to unlock that divisibility trick we saw a minute ago. Okay, time to use our master key on puzzle number two, that whole divisible by nine secret. To really see how it works, let's just pick a number. How about 7,309? All right, first step is something we all learned way back in grade school. We're just gonna break this number down by its place value. So it's 7,000 plus 300 plus zero plus nine. Super simple, right? Okay, now for the really clever part, this is the trick. We're gonna rewrite each of those place values, but in a very specific way. We're gonna relate it to a multiple of nine. So instead of 1,000, we'll write 999 plus one. Instead of 100, we'll do 99 plus one. And for 10, it's nine plus one. See the pattern emerging? And right here, this is the secret sauce. When we rearrange this whole big expression, we can split it into two neat little piles. The pile on the left, that is guaranteed to be a multiple of nine, right? Because every piece of it has a factor like 999 or 99. And the pile on the right, well, look at that. It's just the sum of the digits from our original number. So what this is really telling us is that our number, 7,309, is actually just some big multiple of nine plus the sum of its own digits. Which means, if you want to find the remainder when you divide the whole thing by 9, you can totally ignore that first big chunk and just find the remainder of the sum of the digits. 
And that is why the shortcut works every single time. It's not magic, it's just clever algebra. Okay, so we've used some solid reasoning to pull back the curtain on these number tricks. But this same kind of logical thinking, it's also the key to cracking a totally different kind of puzzle. They're called cryptoarithms. They're puzzles where every letter stands for a single unique digit from zero to nine. The whole game is to figure out which letter is which number. So let's take a look at this one. We've got a two digit number, PQ, and when you multiply it by eight, you get another two digit number, RS. The first thing you always do with these is look for the clues, the constraints, you know, the hard rules that narrow down your choices. And the biggest clue right off the bat is that we're multiplying a two digit number by eight and the answer is still a two-digit number. That tells us immediately that PQ has to be a pretty small number. So let's just test the possibilities. What's the smallest two-digit number we could try? 10. Okay, if PQ is 10, then 10 times eight is 80. So P would be one, Q is zero, R is eight, and S is zero. But wait, the rules say each letter has to be a unique digit, and here we have Q and S both being zero. So nope, 10 is out. What's next? 11? Well, P and Q would be the same, and that's not allowed either. Okay, how about 12? Let's see. 12 times 8 is 96. Let's check the letters. P is 1, Q is 2, R is 9, S is 6. Hey, all different digits. It works. And just to be sure, what if we try 13? Well, 13 times 8 is 104, and that's a three-digit number, so that's too big. So it has to be 12. That's our only answer. So what's the big idea here? What ties all of this together? It's that these aren't just random tricks or little brain teasers. They're actually like little windows that let us peek into the beautiful hidden logic that's at the very heart of all math. So what's the main takeaway from all this? I think it's that you can solve really complex looking problems by just breaking them down into simpler pieces. We saw that perfectly when we took that huge number and rewrote it as a multiple of nine plus a tiny remainder. Really, the most powerful tool we have is just reasoning that process of asking, wait, why does that work? And then using logic to hunt down the answer. That's the real key that unlocks all these puzzles. And that really brings us to the final point. The real fun in math isn't just knowing the tricks, it's getting that aha moment when you finally understand why they work. So I'm gonna leave you with one to try on your own. O-N plus O-N plus O-N equals P-O. Using the same kind of detective work we just did, what's the hidden logic here? What numbers are hiding behind those letters?